Let's go. Okay, YouTube, my British computer guy here with another quick video. This is a follow up to my cheap RGB matrix video. There are cheaper RGB matrixes out there now on Amazon. Um, these, these strips are by a company called, mm, uh, here, I uh, can't pronounce it, Simbrilked, Simbrilked, but uh, I want to go ahead and do the unboxing and well, it's, I've already kind of unboxed it and opened it to check the contents, but this is what you're going to get, okay? So, for the, for the demonstration purposes today, I'm going to be using a 16 by 16 WS2812B matrix. I'm going to be using an 8 by 32 WS2812B uh, LED matrix and an 8 by 8 w, uh, WS2812 LED matrix. It does come with three little extra adapters, one for each, and we're going to go ahead and wire this up and check each one to make sure they work and see how they compare to my other one that I did earlier. So um, to start off with, I'm going to start off with the 8x32 and we're going to make this super simple, okay? Now, as I showed you before, uh, you don't need very much to go ahead and hook these up. And one thing you do, you do need to know when you hook these up is which is the uh, LED number one, which is the first LED in the strand. Now, there's a couple of ways of finding this out, and the, the easiest way I've found is if you look at closely, if you look closely at the the LED matrix itself, you'll notice surrounding the LED uh, module there's a little white line. It kind of looks like uh, a micro SD card. Okay, and you can see, kind of see that there. So if you orient the LED strip, or sorry, the LED matrix, the same fashion as this, as if you're going to go ahead and insert a micro SD card, then the, the first pixel is always going to be, as far as I'm aware, the upper left, top left hand corner, okay? So that's what you need to go ahead and tell WLED that you're using, okay? Now, the other thing is you need to know is whether the serpentine pattern is. Now, if you hold this, once you've got this in the correct orientation, you know where the top is, go ahead and flip it over horizontally and look at the back. On the back, you can see kind of the indentations of the serpentine. So this is, is a vertical serpentine pattern. So it goes from top to bottom. There are some board, uh, some matrices, I've not found one yet, but there are some that go that direction until horizontally. So in WLED, we need to go ahead and tell WLED that this is a uh, vertical serpentine matrix and that the, the first pin, sorry, the first LED is the top left. So let's go ahead and get it started at starting. So what you're gonna need for this, I'm gonna do a no solder version of this video for simplicity's sake and for quickness because I've got three different matrices that I wanna plug in and show you. So first of all, we need to use the ESP32 and this is an ESP32D. And you notice the D because it has the overhanging Wi-Fi antenna, okay? Uh, we need one of the extender, the adapters that came with the matrix. We're gonna need three breadboard jumpers. And these are just 20 gauge or 22 gauge breadboard jumpers. I will leave a link to some down in the description below. Three of those. You need some Wago connectors. Uh, so we don't have to do any soldering. We can just basically clip, clip everything in. You want two of the three ways and one of the two ways. The two ways for the data, the three ways for the positive and the negative, okay? And power. You're gonna need, uh, well, I'm using uh, a pigtail adapter. Now, you could, if you wanted to, go ahead and power using a micro USB cable, but I wouldn't really recommend that for something like an LED matrix because there's quite a lot of pixels there. You've got 256 LEDs, and this, if you're using the, the power in there on the micro USB, it can only take in about one amp worth of power, which isn't really gonna, it'll, it'll power them, but they won't be very bright. Okay, so I'm using uh, a USB pigtail adapter. Uh, I'll leave links in the description down below to these as well. Okay, all right, last but not least, power. I'm going to be using a uh, battery backup that I've got. I use my phone. This is an INEU. Um, this is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, fantastic. I got this on Amazon a while ago. It has a uh, USB C 65 watt, 36 watt, and a USB A. 18 watt port so it does it will it is capable of charging a laptop like an ipad or an imac or an imac sorry a macbook pro uh pretty quickly it'll do ultra uh, ultra fast charging on your uh 
on your on your cell phones. Uh, I can get a full like half a charge in about 30 minutes on uh, when, I'm, when I'm plugging into one of these bad boys. It's really good, and it also has a little kick-out stand. So if you want to go ahead and you know mount your phone in there to to watch a movie while you're charging, you can do, it, which is kind of nice. Well, that's a nice touch. Anyway, link in the description down below. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead and connect all this together. Now, the ESP32 chip, um, <clears throat> if you're running WLED on here and you've, you've installed it via the install.wled.me website, the latest beta version of WLED uses a different pin from the older versions of WLED for the data. Uh, the new data pin that is, is the default, and it can be changed, uh, is pin 16. So it's actually that one right there. Okay. Um, I say you can change it if you wish. Is that a 16 or a 15? I think that could be a 15. My eyesight is terrible. No, that's a 15, it's just a worn off. Okay, so that's 16. Um, I said you can change, these are all known as GPIO pins. Well, most of them are. Most of the numbered ones are. Obviously, GND is not. Uh, 3V3 is 3 volt, 3.3 volt, and the 5V is a 5 volt. Uh, <clears throat> GPIO basically stands for general purpose input output. So you can actually tell WLED which pin you want to have output your data signal for your LED strip or LED matrix. So I'm going to leave it as default for the time being and I know for a fact that it's uh, going to be 16 because I've used the new version of WLED already. But you can change it and I will show you where you can change it in WLED if you need to. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and take the uh, extension cable or the little connector, I don't even want to call it, and connect it to the radio connectors. So to do this, we're going to use a, a three-way on the earth. And you'll notice the earth is actually white. The ground is a white cable on LED strips for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe that's how they do it in China, where, they, where the, probably most of these are made. Um, and then we're going to use, this is actually a red, uh, it's kind of multiple colors, but it's, it's actually a red positive. That's going to be the five volts. Put a three-way on there. And then we're going to go ahead and put a two-way on the data, because the only other connection to the data is going to be to the, uh, from the, uh, the ESP32. Okay, so now we've got that, let's go ahead and hook in the power. So we don't need the data for the power. We're going to go ahead and take the black and plug that into the white side of the Wago connector. Give it a tug, make sure it's in there connectly, uh, firmly. And then the red goes into the positive side. Yeah, okay, that's in. All right, and then last but not least, we need to go ahead and connect our breadboard jumpers. To do this, they, they, they actually have little pins on them, so uh, they snap in quite nicely and they're, they're, they're pretty firm. Even though they may look a little bit flimsy, they work really well, uh, especially with the Wago connectors. So, red to red, tug, black to black, give it a tug, and then green to green, and data pin. Okay. So next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and hook up this to our ESP32. So you take the, the female side of the uh, breadboard jumpers and plug them in to the respective pins. So the pins we're interested in are the 5 volt pin, the ground pin, and pin 16. So we identified pin 16 over, over here. So let's go ahead and do that one more quick. Okay. Then we want the 5 volt pin, which is over here and the ground pin which is about three four doors down okay there it is okay now that's done we need to go ahead and plug in our our, our matrix it'll only plug in one way into one connector okay and then last but not least apply power And as you can see, only the first 29 or 30 LEDs light up. That's because on a freshly flashed ESP32, WLED does not know how many LEDs we're actually working with. And by default, I think it defaults to either 29 or 30. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and uh, connect in to our WLED app within the ESP32 and take a look at the settings. Okay, 
So now you've got this file, we've got it up and running, we're going to go ahead and remote in. So go ahead and open up your phone and go to your Wi-Fi settings uh, and find the network that says WLED-AP. It'll say sign in and it's required. If it's the first time you've signed in or you've not signed in before, it's going to prompt you for a password. And that password is WLED1234 in lowercase letters. Okay, I've already signed into it before, so it should be pretty straightforward. There we go. All right, so we're in. And you're greeted with this menu. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and let uh, WLED know how many LEDs we're actually working with in our matrix. So we want to go to the, the, the controls, and we want to go ahead and go to the config. When you get to config, you want to go to LED preferences, and you want to scroll down to hardware setup. Length is currently set to 30, so we know that's there's more than 30 in there. This is an 8 by 32 matrix, so 8 by 32 is 256. So enter that number there and hit save. And voila. Okay, so all the lights come on. So we know that's 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 good, that's correct. Next we need to know, we need to go ahead and program the, the WLED software to let WLED know that this is actually a 2D matrix and not an individual uh, LED strip. So go to 2D configuration tell it it is a 2D matrix and scroll down. Here's where you want to remember the information we, I told you earlier. So once you've told it it is an LED matrix, we need to go ahead and define the matrix. Sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? Um, we need to basically go ahead and first of all say okay, that, uh, that what, what type of panel it is and where that first LED is. Now as you'll see, it's already defaulted to the top left, which is great because that's our first pixel and we already know that. So wonderful. Now the orientation, um, it's not the orientation of the panel, whether it be horizontal or portrait. Remember, this is the serpentine. So, or the serpentine, serpentine, I don't even call it. Uh, it is vertical, okay? And it's, it is a serpentine. So we're gonna check that there. Dimensions, width and height. Width is gonna be 32 for this particular panel, and the height is eight, which we already have. Okay, and now we go, and this version of w, WLED does give us a visual, visual representation of the board. Okay, so now we want to hit save. And now we should be ready to go ahead and test some of the, uh, the effects. So let me just dim the lights here real quick. So go back. I'm gonna go to the controls. And let's do the scrolling text, which should display the date and time. Which it does. So that so we know now that it is set up correctly, the correct orientation. Um, if you got one of those things, maybe the first pixel was in the, you said uh, bottom right, then it would probably display the text upside down. But it's still fine. You could just reorient the panel if you needed to. Whatever works for your application. Okay. Okay, so this one works fine, uh, looks great. And I say, this is cheap. This particular panel, as I say, right now is only $14.79 on Amazon, um, normally $15.99, so still a lot cheaper than BTF Lighting's version of this, and also uh, Waziri's, uh, which was my previous favorite. Um, I also need to look at Waziri's LED strips, sorry, uh, this company's Sunbrilt's uh, LED strip to see if they're any cheaper. But they say these are the this is the 8x32 matrix and this one runs for 1479. Uh, the 16x16 16 16 panel also uh, is the same price as this particular panel right now. Uh, I say normally 1599 but they've got a bit of a discount on them. But uh, so far looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and change the uh, the pattern. Uh, let's go ahead and check some of the other things out, okay? Akimi or Akimai, I'm not too sure you pronounced that one. Let's see what else we have. Black hole. Colors are really vibrant, really nice. Um, I have to admit, this isn't even on full brightness. The, the brightness is only at 50%, and that's mainly because uh, it's not going to show up well on my uh, camera if I have it too high. Um, just note also, if you wanted to go ahead and get the maximum brightness out of these LEDs, you want to go ahead and use the power injection cables. Um, this is a power injection cable. This can be used to power injection and to run the data on to yet another panel. So you can actually hook up multiple panels. Uh, I'm not too sure what the maximum is, but uh, you can definitely do that. All right, so let's go ahead and pause. And let's go ahead and take a look at the, the 16 by 16 panel. So I've disconnected everything. Uh, well, I've disconnected the chip from the connector. Let's go ahead and move this to one side. 
Now we've already flashed the software, software everything's done is, is fine there. All we need to do now is just plug these in and determine which is that first first pixel, okay? So remember what I said, look at the, the board. Okay, so it looks like a micro SD card, plugging it in, top left. So that's gonna be the first pixel. Now the power input is here. First pixel is there, flip it over. As we can see, the orientation of the serpentine is, uh, is, is still correct, it's still uh, vertical. So we don't need to change that. We just need to go ahead and change the dimensions of the matrix in WLED. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Now, we, we, the software on the chip already knows that it's got 256 pixels in it. So it should just light up solid. Fingers crossed. Oh, well, I took the, took the last thing we did, okay. All right, so we need to go ahead and get this correct. So let's go back to our app. Okay, now we're back to the app. Uh, if you see we're on the black hole, let's just take it back to solid for a second. Now we're gonna go to config, and we're gonna go to our 2D configuration. So everything is still set up correctly. However, if we, as you can see, this is not an 8, uh, 32 by 8 matrix. This is a 16 by 16. So we need to change that to 16 by 16. Top left is still correct, vertical is still correct, and it's serpentine. Just save. Let's go back. We should be able to go to the, the controls now and choose one of our patterns. Okay, so can we, let's do the scrolling text. Awesome. Works great. And I say once again, the uh, the colors on this are fantastic. It, it, it really doesn't. This camera uh, doesn't do the, the pixels justice. To be perfectly honest. What else do we have? Really cool. Um, I don't have any uh, 2D GIFs, sorry, 2D GIFs. <laughs> Make sure I get that correct after my last video um, to put on here right now. Uh, I did do a video though that shows you how to go ahead and create uh, 2D GIFs uh, and be, how to be able to upload them to your matrixes. So be sure to go ahead and check out that video. Uh, I'll leave a link to that one down in the description below. Um, that was a that was a pretty cool one. That was a, kind of a fun project. You do need a photo uh, editing application such as Photoshop to be able to go ahead and do that. Um, but it's, it's very simple, very straightforward, and you can get something up and running uh, on there in probably less than less than five minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and check it, check out the last one. Now, before I do that, let's go ahead and put this back to solid. We're going to go ahead and change the uh, dimensions of the panel. Let's go turn this off real quick. Go to the config, go to the uh, 2D configuration, and we let's take a look at the. Let's unplug this first. Let's take a look at the, uh, the matrix on this one. Okay, so as you can see. That's the, uh, the little picture of an SD card pointing that way. So top left is going to be that first pixel. Also serpentine is vertical. So we're good to go on this one as well. So we just need to go ahead and let the app know the dimensions of the, the board. So it's going to be 8 by 8. And there's the visual representation. Everything else is fine. Vertical serpentine. So save. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it in. And this particular this particular matrix from uh, Sunbrilked um, is uh, currently normally eight ninety nine, and they're selling them right now for eight dollars and twenty nine cents. These are okay. I'm not too sure exactly what you would use these for, uh, but I wanted to get one just so I could compare it against other the other two. But uh, let's go back in here and go ahead and power that on. Okay, one thing I didn't do, I do need to go ahead and let it know how many LEDs are in this particular matrix. So we're going to go back to the LED preferences. 
if both of the other boards had 256 so it didn't affect wasn't affecting anything but this one only has was it 8 by 8 so 64 save oh wow it got a whole lot brighter all of a sudden okay okay I'll go back and uh, let's do the see if the scrolling text works on this the scrolling text may work on here but I should do um, it's the same height as the other one let's go to effects let's go to text uh, yep there you go as I say, so this is a tiny little 8x8. Eight eight. I, mean, I don't know really what you could do with this. I'm sure there's some pretty cool practical applications. You can make a very small pixel art display with that. Uh, maybe have a couple of them on your wall. Kind of cool. It'd be very easy to make a diffused uh, box for this on a 3D printer. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this out. Let's go back to solid. Uh, let's try the. Akimi, Akimai. Yeah, some of the effects aren't probably going to look too cool on this one because it's a little bit small. Okay, but you get the point. Okay, so anyway, yeah, I have to say I'm very impressed with the quality of these particular matrixes. Um, uh, especially for the price, uh, I really am. The, these really super good value for money. Um, I say links down in the description below. If you do use the links in the description, I do get a small commission if you buy something. Um, it's it's tiny, and it, honestly, it doesn't affect the price that you pay for the product. So whatever the prices they're selling them for normally, that's the price you pay. Um, but uh, it help it helps me keep buying in products to go ahead and show on, on my stream uh, and I can go ahead and try other things. So hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon for notifications to future videos. As I say, I'm trying to get stuff out uh, on a somewhat regular basis. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please share this with your friends. Uh, this is more of a how-to tutorial than anything, um, but I really like these new these, this new product and for the price you can't beat it. So thanks guys, I appreciate you watching. Until the next time, cheers now. Bye-bye.